The sound of broken glass echoed through the dimly lit room. Adora's hands were shaking. Her twin sister Chamaka stood with a crazy look in her eyes, holding shattered wine bottle. She, please don't do this, Adora begged, her voice shaking. Chamaka took a step forward, her voice cold and unfamiliar. You think I don't know what's going on? You think you can take my husband, my life, and just walk away? Her lips coiled into a bitter smile. I trusted you, Ada. I loved you. Adora felt the weight of those words like a punch to the gods. How had it come to this? How had two sisters, once inseparable, reached the point of blood and violence? The room seemed to close in on them as memories of their childhood flooded Adora's mind. But the nightmare wasn't just about jealousy or betrayal. It was about something far more terrifying. Desmond, Chamaka's husband, the man they had both loved, wasn't just the source of their fight. He was a serial killer and they had only just uncovered the truth. The story didn't begin with bloodshed though, it began with love. Chamaka and Adora had always been closer than most siblings. Born with just minutes apart, they were not only twins, but best friends. Growing up in a small village, they were known as the inseparable ones. Everywhere Chamaka went, Adora followed. They shared everything from clothes and secrets to the dreams of the future. There was nothing they wouldn't do for each other. In their teenage years, their bond grew even stronger. When one was hot, the other felt the pain. They were known for finishing each other's sentences and understanding each other without a word being spoken. Life was simple back then, filled with laughter, shared joy and love that seemed unbreakable. When Chamaka met Desmond, Adora was the first to know. She had never seen her sister so excited about anyone. Desmond was charming, successful, and seemed to adore Chamaka in a way that made Adora happy for her sister. For the first time, it seemed like someone outside their twin bubble had entered their world, and they welcomed him with open arms. When Chamaka married Desmond, Adora stood by her side as the maid of honor. The wedding was a beautiful affair, filled with joy and the promise of a bright future. But beneath the surface, cracks were beginning to form. Three years into Chamaka's marriage, things began to change. Chamaka's inability to conceive weighed heavily on her as the months turned into years. Her frustration turned into desperation. Adora watched helplessly as her once happy sister became a shadow of herself. Chamaka's smile grew rarer, her laughter quieter, until eventually, all that was left was the hollow pain of unfulfilled dreams. Ada, I don't know what to do anymore, Chamaka admitted one evening, her voice barely above a whisper. They were sitting together on a couch one cool evening. Adora knew something was coming, but she couldn't have anticipated the request her sister was about to make. What do you mean, Adora asked. I can't give him a child, Chamaka said, her voice cracking. He's starting to pull away from me. I can see it in his eyes. I'm afraid he will leave me, Chamaka said. Adora shook her head. This man would never leave you, Chamaka. He loves you and I know it. Chamaka looked away, tears filling her eyes. He loves me now, but what happens in another year or two? He wants a family, Ada, and I can't give him that. Ada reached out, squeezing her sister's hand. You are not to blame. There are other ways. Maybe you can try other kind of treatment. Adora tried to console her sister. I've thought about that, Chamaka interrupted. I've gone to different hospitals. They said I am barren. I don't want to wait anymore. I can't. I want you to help me, Ada, Chamaka said, finally meeting her sister's gaze. I want you to have his child, sleep with my husband and make a baby for us. The air between them grew tense, Adora's eyes widened in disbelief. What are you talking about? Chamaka took a deep breath, her hands shaking. We are twins. It doesn't mean anything if you carry the baby. I need you, Ada. I need you to do this for me, Chamaka begged. 
At first, Adora refused, horrified by the idea. But Chamaka's desperation wore her down. They had always done everything for each other. How could she say no now, when her sister needed her the most? Eventually, Adora agreed. But she made Chamaka promise that this would remain a secret. It was supposed to be a sacrifice, something done out of love for her twin. But love, as they would soon learn, can turn to something dangerous. Living under the same roof with Desmond, Adora soon found herself drawn to him in ways she hadn't expected. What started as a formal arrangement, spending time together to make a baby, turned into something far more complicated. Desmond, with his easy charm and quiet intensity, slowly began to chip away at Adora's resolve. Late night conversations over tea, where they discussed everything from philosophy to childhood memories, became intimate moments that neither of them could ignore. Desmond started complimenting her more, his touch lingering a little longer each time. One evening, they found themselves alone in the kitchen after dinner. The air was thick with unspoken tension. Desmond reached over, brushing a stray coy from Adora's face. You are beautiful, Adora, he said softly, his eyes locked on hers. Adora felt her pulse quicken. Desmond, we shouldn't be doing this. I know, he whispered, leaning in closer, but I can't help it. You remind me so much of her, but you are different. That night, Desmond kissed her. It was the kind of kiss that blurred the lines between duty and desire. Adora tried to push him away, but part of her didn't want to. The cute gnared at her, but she couldn't deny the growing connection between them. It wasn't long before things escalated, and what was supposed to be a one-time favor for her sister became a secret affair. Adora tried to rationalize it, telling herself that she was only doing this for Chamaka, but deep down, she knew the truth. She had fallen in love with Desmond, and he had fallen for her too. Chamaka wasn't blind. She noticed the way Desmond's attention shifted from her to Adora, how he spent more time with her sister than his own wife. The jealousy that had been growing inside of her finally boiled over the day she found out Adora was pregnant. You are pregnant, Adora, Chamaka whispered, her voice filled with disbelief. How long have you known? Adora hesitated, guilt written all over her face. I was just going to tell you, I swear, I just... You are supposed to be carrying my child, Ada. This wasn't part of the plan, Chamaka screamed, tears streaming down her face. The fight that followed was brutal. Words were exchanged that could never be taken back. Chamaka accused Adora of betraying her, of stealing her husband, Why Adora tried to defend herself, saying she never meant for any of this to happen. You love him, Chamaka shouted, angry as her twin. Don't you? Adora couldn't deny it anymore. I didn't mean to, but yes, I do love him. I love your husband. Chamaka's face twisted with rage. I hate you. Those words caught deeper than anything else. The sisters, once inseparable, were now divided by a man who wasn't even worthy of any of their love. But the worst was yet to come. As the tension between the sisters grew, Adora began to notice strange things about Desmond. He would disappear for hours without explanation. There were nights when he came home late, smelling of alcohol and something else. One day, while cleaning the house, Adora stumbled upon a hidden drawer in Desmond's study. Inside, she found photographs of women, dozens of them. Some were smiling, others looked terrified. But the most chilling part was that many of them resembled her and Chamaka. Adora's heart raced as she flipped through the pictures. She recognized some of the faces from news reports about missing women. The realization hit her like a freed train. Desmond was a serial killer and he had a specific type, women who looked like her and her sister. 
Shaking, Adora called out to her sister Chamaka with the evidence. Chi, I found something. We need to talk. Chamaka, still cold and distant from their fight, barely glanced at her. What now, Ada? Do you want to tell me how you will take my husband away from me? But Adora answered, It's Desmond. I think he's been hiding something from us. Reluctantly, Chamaka followed Adora into the study, where the photographs were spread out on the decks. At first, Chamaka didn't want to believe it. This can't be true. He's my husband. How can my husband be a serial killer? Adora's voice trembled as she explained. At this point, Desmond came in. So you now know I'm a serial killer, Desmond said. If you want to know what to happen next, follow us for part two. Kindly like, subscribe, and share to your friends. Until next time, bye.